Hey there, I'm Kate and this is Monocat. In this video, we are going to look at side pads for EOCs and many of the different types that are out there, so you can find out what's the right fit for you. So, let's get this started. In this video, I'm first going to talk briefly about why we use side pads in the first place and where they sort of come from. Then the different types that are there, options for different price categories, materials, how to attach and position them on your wheel, and at the end, my personal recommendation. From the beginning, EUC companies started to create their own version of side pads as well which were looking a lot like shoe soles, as they're nothing more than a squishy piece of plastic or EVA foam that you can glue at the side of your EUC. This is a great addition on the wheel, as it can help to reduce some pain from the side of your leg, but doesn't help much when it comes to jumps or uneven terrain. The time side pads started to pop up more often was in Kuji's video, around three years ago, where he talks about the Kuji pads and shows how to make side pads from scratch for EUCs in order to have more grip and control over the wheel, as well as for jumping up some curbs. After that, more and more EUC riders started to create their own 3D printed side pads and sell them independently, with brands such as Clark pads, side pads, the more newer Grizzler pads and many more. And now the EUC companies started to include more complex designs of side pads into their most recent EUCs as well, with wheels such as the Kingsong S22, Bigode Master and EX20S, and the just newly released T4. In general, there are many different terms for how to describe the piece of plastic or foam that you can slap onto the side of your EUC, but the one I heard most often is side pads. There are many different types of side pads for EUCs, but most of them fit in one of three different categories when it comes to their functionality. Those are sort of the standard side pads, power pads and jump pads. First, you have the standard side pads, which are there to mostly increase the comfort for your legs during riding and thereby also holding the wheel better. Those are usually the ones that have the shoe sole look and sometimes come already pre-installed on most smaller wheels. Then there are the power pads that help you, next to additional grip on the wheel, to be able to accelerate and brake harder on the wheel by leaning against them. And the last group are the jump pads, which are the most popular type, since they can also function as power pads, but in addition to that, they also lock your foot in place during jumps, uneven ground and if you want to perform tricks. The main difference between power pads and jump pads is that jump pads have an additional part in the front and back. Those are lower and closer to the foot and help to lock the foot in place. The biggest variety of different pads exist for jump pads and due to that they can have multiple different ways of how they can be set up. They usually come in either one piece per side or as two pieces. If it's one piece, they are very quickly to set up and have a good default angle, so you can't do much wrong with them. The ones with two pieces are a bit more tricky to set up, but therefore you can achieve a more personal setup to fit better to your riding style. There is also the new kinetic system by Nilanova, which consists of five pieces per side which gives even more options for customization in the setup, but can be quite time consuming.
All of those types of side pads come in various price ranges. The cheapest option is the DIY option, like the Kuji pads. Here you can use EVA foam or similar materials to cut out fitting pieces and glue them together in order to make your own side pads. Here you just have to spend 10 to 20 bucks for the materials. I haven't done any myself yet, but it sounds like a very cool option. So if you would want to see a video from me trying to make some DIY side pads, let's reach 500 likes and I'll make some. If you already tried making some of your own, let me know in the comments how it went. Also the producers of EUC sell side pads separately, if they're not already incorporated into the design. Those are usually not that expensive and are priced around 50 to 100 bucks. From the ones that I've tried so far, they don't seem to be well thought through and are not giving much help with grabbing the wheel or locking the foot in. This is usually because the middle part is quite thick as well, which makes the bumps in the front and back not that effective. The next option are 3D printed side pads from the aftermarket. They usually range between 50 to 200 bucks and there are multiple different sellers. The most popular ones are usually Clark pads, Talk pads, Grizzler pads, Sci pads and sent recently also Nilanova pads. You can also print them yourself if you or a friend of yours has a 3D printer as a cheaper option, but it might be difficult to get the materials and print right in the beginning. After that, the next option are side pads made out of leather from aftermarket sellers, often also called Russian pads since creators in Russia started making them. They are the most pricey option and tend to cost between $100 and $300. When selecting pads, an important thing to notice is the difference in the materials. Foam and leather pads tend to be more squishy and give in more easily while most 3D printed materials tend to be more on the harder side. Which ones is the right for you is an individual choice and you will just have to try what's best for your riding style. Something to keep in mind? If you tend to ride with shorts or only knee pads, softer materials are less likely to hurt. If you ride with knee and shin guards, more thicker pants or you just like a bit of pain, the soft or hardness of the material is not really a problem. When attaching the side pads on your EOC, there are basically two ways. You can either glue them on directly or attach them with velcro stripes. Since it's difficult to position the pads right the first time, using velcro is a better option since you can easily reposition them. For this, you just have to glue some velcro, preferably the soft side, onto the wheel and then the other, more harsher side onto the pads and then you can rearrange them as many times as you like. This makes it also easier to adjust them to different shoes or riders. When it comes to positioning side pads on the wheel, there are some things to consider. If they are attached more towards the front, it will be easier to accelerate, but more difficult to brake. Vice versa, if they are attached to the back, braking is easier but accelerating will be more difficult and can for some people result in pain in the calves during longer rides. I personally like to have them a small bit further to the back as I like to have more control over the braking power of the wheel. But this is often not so convenient when going up hills or inclines. In general, it's good to change the position of the pads if the ride feels weird or painful. Also, the less wiggle room you have around your leg and foot gives you more leverage on the wheel, but therefore the turns and carving become more difficult. When it comes to setting up jump pads, the lower and closer to the foot they are set up, the more control you have over the wheel and the less likely it is that you will fall off. In addition to jump pads, I often install the standard side pads at the top for more comfort and grip on the wheel. My personal favorite right now for my riding style are the Grizzler pads, 
With their two pieces per side, I can set them up more individually. And since they are jump pads, they hold my foot securely in place if I encounter some bumps. Also the material is on the softer side and has some give, which makes it more comfortable to strongly lean against them during acceleration and braking. I'm also a fan of the Nilla Nova Kinetic Jump Pads, since they can be highly individualized, but on the other side are difficult to set up. So I prefer the Grizzler Pads currently. This is mostly because I install and deinstall my jump pads quite often, either for teaching other people how to ride, switching wheels with other riders, or for this video, for example. Since I'm a big fan of the Grizzler pads, I reached out to them and asked if they could be so kind to provide you guys with a discount. So if you're interested in getting some Grizzler pads for yourself, you can use my discount code 5% which gives you, well, 5% off and at the same time you will support my channel directly as I receive some kickback from that. They also come in many different color options so you can customize them so they will be fitting to the style of your EOC or gear. With that being said, if you enjoyed this video please give it a like and if you feel really fancy you might subscribe. See you next time.